for six on the review. We're going to try to simplify the cube root of uh, that beast, 80 over 10, a to the eighth over a to the fourth, and then b to the sixth. So first thing you want to do is look inside the radical to see if anything can be simplified. All right. So if you just had 80 over 10, let's say in elementary school, and your teacher asked you to reduce that, you'd call that 8. Right. So it's going to end up being an 8 in the numerator of this fraction. Then let's say you get to middle school and you have a problem that says a to the eighth over a to the fourth. It's the a part. And your teacher probably eighth grade, I would say, asks you to reduce this. Well, that's going to end up being a to the fourth because we're supposed to subtract the exponents. That's going to end up in the numerator, a to the fourth. The b to the sixth doesn't have anything to really simplify with, so we'll just put b to the 6 down in the bottom, and then go from there. Now it's time to start applying the cube root. Anything that can be cube rooted perfectly, we'll leave alone. Like the cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of b to the 6, we're going to leave alone as well. Well, we're not going to change it on the inside, but we are going to take the cube root of it. The reason that's possible is the 6 is divisible by the index, 3. So the coefficient 8 gets cube rooted and comes out as a 2. The cube root of b to the 6 on the bottom, that would end up being b to the 6 thirds. That's why I mentioned that it's divisible. So that's going to end up as a b squared in the bottom. The a to the fourth is sort of the... Uh, the exception here. It doesn't work out perfectly. However, you can break up a to the fourth into a cubed times a. So the a cubed can be cube rooted. So that's going to come out as an a. And then this lonely a is the only thing that got stuck. The cube root of a gets stuck and does not get simplified. And that's going to be your final answer possible that on the answer key you might see that cube root of a up in the numerator. So it's okay like if you throw this up here in the numerator instead of keeping it out here on its own. Either way is fine. Okay. So let's keep going with part b. Same idea. Look inside the radical for anything to simplify. For example, 96 over 3 is going to reduce to 32. That's just 96 divided by 3 is 32. The x's are bottom heavy. See over here when we canceled the a's, and a to the fourth ended up on the top because a to the 8 is bigger in the top. The x to the 9 on the bottom outweighs the top. There's only one x on the top, so this is actually going to reduce to just x to the 8 on the bottom. And that, that y cubed, that's going to stay up top. It doesn't reduce. And I, I miss, I did this wrong. This is the fifth root here. Let me get my eraser. I copied it as the cube root, but it is the fifth root, right? Fifth root. And that's nice, actually, because the fifth root of 32, that's perfect. The fifth root of 32 is 2. So it's all about seeing what you can release from the radical. 32 can be released. y cubed is going to get stuck, no doubt, because its exponent is smaller than the index, smaller than the radical. I'm saving some room out here. Actually, I need to make that 2 a little bit smaller. I'll show you why in a moment. Okay, so the y cubed, nothing you can do about it. It just gets stuck, and it's in the numerator inside the radical. The x to the 8, however, can partially be brought out because this 8 is larger than the 5. 
If you think of x to the 8 as x to the 5 times x cubed, you could take the fifth root of x to the 5. Keep in mind it's on the bottom, so you're going to have 2 over x. And then this x cubed gets stuck in here with the y cubed. 